Hello EV friends, it's Dan here, the electric Estonian, and beside me is an old electric Mitsubishi. But fortunately, I don't have to review the Mitsubishi today. I have a much more interesting car to review, the Audi e-tron. Top of class electric car produced by Audi with a huge battery, almost 90 kilowatt hours. I'm not saying that I would personally consider to buy this car, but uh, I'm really interested to see what kind of technology it features, what kind of comfort. So uh, I'm still very much excited to test this car and do the review for you. So from the exterior it looks quite a regular Audi to me, to be honest, uh, except that it's quite big and uh, higher than uh, the Audis that I'm used to. It has Audi sign that has holes in it and for that reason it's not very aerodynamic and there is a grill that is half fake and it's covered and half of them is like actual holes that air can go through and also here is quite quite big uh, air intake for EVs usually uh, the uh, front side of EVs is more aerodynamic but on the other side there is this opening here that allows air to go through uh, this is to improve aerodynamics well the wheels are quite huge 21 inch wheels. I cannot imagine what these kind of wheels cost, but well, if you already bought this e-tron, which is a huge and expensive car, then uh, I guess the price of the wheels doesn't matter. What's most interesting about this specific version is this. It's a camera that's replacing the side view mirrors. But to be honest, um, I haven't heard that this greatly improves the range. So it's more like a tech gimmick uh, on this car. But on the other side, really interesting that car makers are experiencing with this kind of technology. Let's see the trunk. So no hands, no effort. Motorized lift gate. So as you can see, plenty of space here. It would make a good family car for strollers, dogs, whatever. Uh, this is a rubberized mat for preventing your stuff to slip around. So here would be space for a spare tire that this specific car doesn't have. Even some deeper storage here. Space on the sides also for cables or something that you need. And here is this uh, cargo cover that is detachable. Uh, you don't have to go to the rear seats to make them fold, you can just use this one. Hopla! And the other one. Hopla! Don't do it when someone is sitting on the back seats. And closing the trunk is as effortless as opening it, just push, pushing this button here and it closes. So to open the front trunk you need to use this lever here, extra button here, charging cables. The Audi universal charger that is included with the car is quite interesting because you can charge both with three phase 16 amp and with one phase there is the Shuko and the charging port is located on the driver side and it opens electronically and there is CCS charging up to 150 kilowatt Adjustable air suspension allows you to find a comfortable setting for every type of road, be it smooth asphalt or country road. Oh, and that door closing sound. Just a slight push is enough to close the door. 
The front seats have attached headrests that might reduce the visibility of rear passengers a little bit, but generally the seats are very nice, good side support, leather material, probably synthetic, and they can be adjusted electronically in every possible way, including lumbar support. And the seat settings can be saved here. The extra support for legs can be opened and closed manually. As you'd expect, there is loads of knee room when I'm sitting behind myself. And also I can put my feet under the front seat. So this is the rear seat handrest. Cup holders. Why don't you close? Okay, and to open this entire middle part of the rear seat, you pull from here. And you could put skis through here. Headroom in the rear is also very adequate. I can put my fist here and even move it. So I guess even two meters tall people can sit here fine. The center console is very nicely organized and offers different storage solutions. Here is a clip that can hold your tablet or phone. Here is place for cup holders. You can have one or two as you need them. And under the armrest, which opens quite heavily, is another compartment for storage. And under the armrest there are different ports, two USB sockets, place for SIM card and SD card. Here is a place to rest your wrist and this is the gear selector. The instrument cluster or the virtual cockpit is essentially one big screen where you can show different information. Drive information, media, phone or navigation, which is my favorite. It looks the coolest when you switch it to full screen. This is the bottom touch screen, mostly for climate control and the main infotainment screen. Both of them are glossy fingerprint magnets, but very stylish. And the feedback is haptic, so you get kind of vibration and sound when you press the buttons. When you need to type something, the bottom screen can be used either to write letters L. or to be used with keyboard. There are cameras all around the car, which also allows you to use 3D view that is very fancy and can be quite useful for parking into tight places. The heads-up display is the best one I've experienced yet, although it doesn't show so well in the video, actually it's larger than the Kona EV has and there is no extra layer of glass, it's displayed straight on the windshield. The virtual side mirrors with cameras are usually doing their job well. The only thing is that you have to get used to their position. You tend to glance at the camera first. And what you can do here if you tap it... Aha, uh -huh, okay, I can actually slide the image here. So time for a test drive with the Audi e-tron. Unfortunately, I cannot do a full range test, but I will drive as far as allowed. I try to estimate the range and also I will test the rapid charging at the Tiku Boys, which is the fastest rapid charging station in Estonia, up to 160 kilowatt. So what is city driving like with the e-tron? Uh, what I'm personally lacking is uh, regen. So if I release the accelerator pedal, it will just keep rolling and rolling. And if I press the pedal, then it will get a little bit slower, but I want it harder. 
harder. I have to press it several times to actually make it really slow. And it doesn't come to a full stop. Later I found out that under Efficiency Assist menu you can set recuperation to manual and then you can adjust it with the paddles. So this car has quite good driving assist features uh, like the lane assist which keeps you in the middle of the driving lane. It also steers the steering wheel for you. Also what is very good if there is a sharp turn uh, then the car will actually slow down for you. So right now this is happening. It senses a turn coming and it's reducing my speed from 95 to 89 already. So the car knows either from GPS or from the camera where there is a turn coming that would need you to slow down and now actually now it's time for acceleration. So, 39, pushing, yeah, it feels good, and 100, Whew. so what about the efficiency of this car, um, it's not as good as uh, smaller electric cars, the average energy usage is 23.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, uh, to me it already feels uh, quite okay because um, first uh, when I got this car I did like 10 kilometers in the city and then the energy consumption was like whopping uh, over 30 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and then I thought well this is crazy it, it, uh, it's big as a boat and it also takes the energy uh, needed to move a boat but, um, well, 23.4 is already a number that I'm used to on the leaf, <laughs> uh, if it's a storm outside. So I'm resetting now the short-term memory to see what is the average consumption in rain. So like I expected, it didn't make huge difference that I was driving in the rain for 41 kilometers. Yeah, the e-tron is a thirsty car, uh, but uh, driving in bad conditions doesn't uh, double the consumption like it can for smaller EVs. So let's do a little test about car behavior with different uh, drive modes and uh, energy economy. So let's start from the all road. All road setting 100 kilometers per hour, 23.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So efficiency mode also 100 kilometers per hour, but slight rain starting. So efficiency mode, uh, no air conditioning, but rare rain has intensified. And now dynamic mode with uh, wet road and mild rain. So I also discovered that in heavy rain these uh, virtual uh, side mirrors with the camera are very useful because uh, the rain didn't affect them at all. The picture was still uh, perfectly clear, no raindrops on there. One strange thing that happened in the rain was that uh, uh, Adaptive cruise control stopped, even though the rain is clearing out, still uh, sensors blocked. So generally, comparing the e-tron to other EVs that I've driven, um, it's uh, certainly one of the most comfortable ones. The infotainment system of uh, the e-tron is like really classy and stylish but uh, generally I think I like the infotainment system more on the Hyundai's the Kona and the Ionic because uh, they had uh, more information and more features that uh, some geek who is EV enthusiast would like 
So one example of that is that Audi is not displaying the charge percentage anywhere. It's, it's hidden in the menus somewhere. And I arrived at the mecca of Estonian electromobility, the only ultra fast charging station in Estonia. Okay, I think I need to use two hands to make it stretch here. I put it here. Charger did not detect the vehicle. Check the connection connector of the ignition. So I'm done here at the Diku Boys. For some reason, the charger doesn't want to talk to the car. That's a pity. But at least now I can do a proper range test. Uh, driving back to Tartu. I have 97 kilometers of range left. And distance to Tartu is about 70 or 80 kilometers. So right now the car is at 4% and I already got limited performance warning but there is less than 100 meters to my destination so I guess I will make it. It's also downhill. So I can now conclude the range test. The amount of battery remaining is 4% and I wouldn't actually dare drive any further because the car already gave me limited performance warning. You can see that turtle icon there. I would say that the expected range you can get from this car is about 330 to 340 kilometers. So I didn't get the chance to test out the fast charging of e-tron but now I can test with my usual wall box type 2. The estimated time to full is 26 hours. That's a lot. So also testing out the AC charging in Estonian Elmo charging stations and we are getting 11 kilowatt from here which is not bad uh, so it could be used for emergency situations uh, while going to shopping for example it will also add 43 kilometers of range in an hour and now adding even more juice at an Elaport charging station the company that failed me yesterday with the ultra fast charging this time it's regular 50 kilowatt DC charging so here I'm getting 45 kilowatt which is a little bit disappointing because uh, I don't see a reason why we shouldn't get 50 at the car dealership passed out uh, the car is charging at 9.9 .9 kilowatt with three phase charger using the Audi universal charger so that's quite a good charging speed so time for a recap of the Audi e-tron review uh, it's a great electric car for sure it doesn't uh, shame the electric car family uh, its uh, main advantages are really good interior classy design glossy screens black and white uh, minimalistic design on the infotainment system excellent uh, virt virtual cockpit that you have here also heads up display uh, it has lots of space so it could make a good family car and uh, the charging speed is supposed to be quite good 150 kilowatt if it's possible but uh, also you have to uh, take into account that it's quite an expensive car and at that price point uh, you would already have other alternatives like uh, Jaguar I-Pace or uh, Tesla Model X for example. The main Achilles heel of this car unfortunately is the efficiency. So uh, although it has a much bigger battery pack than the Hyundai Kona EV for example, actually it has a similar or less range. So uh, this has been a really interesting chance to test this car. Uh, thank you to Asta Auto in Tartu who 
allowed me to do the testing and see you in next videos. Bye.